In today's video, we are going to talk about a general approach on how to tackle system design interview questions and system design in general. So today's video was a request for many of you guys. Lots of people wanted to know how to approach system design interview questions and how to become a better architect, you know, trying to improve in system design in general. So today we're going to cover um, all the topics that you need to cover in a system design interview. Um, we're going to talk about how to start with it, how to improve and how to be successful with system design. So compared with algorithm and coding questions, system design is usually not something you can just improve by practicing lots of questions. System design questions rely heavily on the experience you have with real systems and with systems you worked on, um, but also um, it helps to read and a lot about systems, how they are designed, what the architectures are, and just being well informed on what the important topics are in computer science and being informed not only about the buzzwords, but also understanding uh, the fundamentals of those systems. The second pillar of success uh, with system design questions, um, besides the background knowledge, is how to communicate your ideas clearly. You need to be able to um, transfer the idea of the system you have in your head um, onto the whiteboard or via the phone to the interviewer. So, it doesn't matter if you are the best architect in the world and if you can't communicate them clearly, if you can't transfer your idea to, uh, to other people, yeah, you're not going to have success uh, with interviews and you certainly won't have success in real world because system design is not like coding interviews where they, are a bit, they feel a bit artificial. Uh, system design in reality is something you do uh, quite often uh, in a team on the job. So a lot of times you have to come up with a design for uh, smaller components, but sometimes also for bigger architectures. And you need to discuss those uh, ideas and your approach uh, with many colleagues uh, and then also present them to senior engineers and uh, leadership. So again, there are two things you need to be good at if you want to have success in system design. One of them is having the background knowledge, knowing about the fundamentals, knowing about software architecture in general. And the second one is articulate your thoughts and having the ability to communicate your idea clearly and precisely. So today we are not going to talk about um, how to improve on the background knowledge and we're also not going to talk about detailed communication strategies, but we're going to try to establish an overarching uh, structure. Um, how can you tackle interview uh, system design interview questions um, in a certain order um, having like a couple of bookmarks in your head which you need to tick off while you go through a system design question. Okay, first of all, phase one is clarifying questions, gathering requirements. Same as with coding interview questions, you need to know what is the actual question and what is the interviewer after. Compared to coding interview questions, it's not always uh, clear and oftentimes it's up to you how you turn system design questions, in what direction you turn it, in what direction you go. So they are going to be very vague. Um, sometimes if you ask for more directions, the interviewer will give you um, a certain topic to talk about, but more often than not, they just want to hear you um, Think about it and explain your approach for, an, for a very high level architecture. So a couple of example questions for a system design like Instagram. What does Instagram need to be able to do? Um, who can post photos? What kind of media will be supported? Um, you can also ask about scalability and capacity. So how big um, or how many users are we expecting per day? what's the traffic you can expect uh, per minute, 
Um, so you can just try to tackle the problem from different directions and find out if the interviewer uh, wants to give you any hints um, or not. And if they're not giving you any hints, uh, that's not a bad sign, you know. That's not, don't try to uh, find the right question to ask. Try to, find to, uh, try to ask a couple of questions, um, but if you notice that they don't have a special topic in mind, then you can probably assume that they want to hear you talk about a high-level architecture and they want to maybe even hear you um, designing the product. Now let's assume that we gathered a couple of requirements and the interviewer um, leaves it up to us on what to talk about and how to design the system. This is where I like to jump into a high-level architecture, a high-level diagram. And what you usually do is just draw a couple of rectangles on a whiteboard, um, or if it's a phone interview, you try to draw the verbal picture. Um, and those boxes are going to be your main components of the architecture. So the main components um, for a web application or a full stack app are usually something like um, something representing the user, um, a load balancer layer, um, an application server layer, maybe a couple of other boxes for, um, if it's a microservice architecture, um, a couple of other services you call, um, a caching layer, or maybe two caching layers, and at the very end, some sort of database or storage layer. Now, don't get me wrong, um, this is not always going to be the same. Um, although some of the components are going to be similar for many interview questions, uh, it depends a lot on the choices you make. So it won't be enough to say this is a database layer. Uh, they want to hear you know, what considerations you're making, um, what properties um, should this database fulfill, and what are the choices you're going to make if you could choose a type of database. Um, same thing goes for your load balancing or if you're using something like a content delivery network, um, you need to explain where you place it, and why you use it and how will it help the architecture in general. So now you identified the main components of your architecture and you explained on a high level why you chose certain components, um, what properties they have and why you decided against certain components. Don't dive into too much detail while drawing that diagram because there is a, there's an actual uh, danger of digging yourself too deep into the rabbit hole of, I don't know, explaining uh, a NoSQL database. So try to keep it a bit more general. Um, give a bit of detail, but not too much. Uh, once you have this diagram in place, you can uh, do a couple of things. Sometimes it makes sense to talk about the data model. Um, so if we're talking about a system like, let's say Instagram, um, you can talk about how you would store um, the media, where it's stored, um, compared to user data and metadata about media. Um, so it could make sense to explain or even draw a database schema for uh, the most important parts of your system. So maybe the user table or a post table or something like this. In other cases, it makes sense to um, define the APIs between two components. Especially if you're talking about a, a service-oriented architecture, you maybe want to define how the REST API between two components could look like, um, which shows that you actually thought about um, why this is split up in components and how it is maybe reusable and how it makes the system um, more efficient in general. So at this point, you have a rough diagram on the whiteboard. Um, you connected those components. You talked about APIs or the data model maybe. And now it's time to decide on what to dive deeper into. Um, so if you're engaged, if you're engaging the interviewer, um, this feels uh, like a natural conversation you have. This should feel like a conversation you have with a colleague or a coworker. So you should try to you know, communicate and uh, also encourage the interviewer to communicate with you because they're going to lead you into um, the direction they want to go. Um, 
you don't want to just have this monologue. Of course, they're interviewing you, so uh, the expectation is that you talk, um, but if you can you know, engage the interviewer a bit more, they will lead you to a point where it's exactly what they're looking for. Essentially, they are looking for um, certain properties you have and they want to confirm that you um, check those boxes. So if the interview is going well, it will lead naturally into one or two topics um, you will talk about in more detail with the interviewer. If it's not going that well, you need to actively ask the interviewer and actively uh, try to find out what you should be talking about in more, de in more detail. You can ask very honestly, you know, tell me what component I should talk about in more depth. So when you're in this detail-oriented conversation, it usually quickly turns into um, optimizations uh, and edge cases. So let's go back to the Instagram example. Um, in Instagram, you could be talking about what kind of users you are mostly worried about, which could be the users with many millions of followers. Um, the same goes for YouTube. With YouTube, you could be worried about uh, videos which are highly popular at a certain point in time. So um, there's a Casey Neistat video going online and those kind of videos, they experience a spike in the very first hours after they were uploaded. So you can talk about those topics and then also how to improve the performance of the system in, in general. So adding caching layers somewhere, pre-computation is always an interesting topic to talk about, um, or also how to improve the customer experience um, by maybe using a content delivery network and these kind of things. Similarly, you can dive into operational topics at this point. So um, you could talk about logging, you could talk about metrics, about auditing, you can talk about um, making the system more reliable, um, replication, um, single points of failures. Have those topics in the back of your mind and if you're, while you're going through the system design with the interviewer, um, try to check those boxes. You don't have to talk about every topic in every system design interview, um, but it oftentimes helps to have them in the back of your mind and as soon as you run out of things to talk about, you can bring one of those up and bring those up which make sense in that situation. In the next uh, videos, we are going to talk about the two topics I mentioned in the beginning. So we're going to talk about um, what are the ways, what are the approaches to improve your communication, how to you know, transfer your thoughts to the interviewer and to your colleagues. And then also we're going to talk about how you can learn system design interviews, how you can brush up on your background knowledge without you know, just developing for 10 more years because that's not going to be the best solution for your next interview. All right, this is today's video. Let me know what you think about it. There are going to be more videos like that, so stay tuned. My name is Ramon Lopez and this is Success in Tech.